there are a number of do's and don'ts to keep in mind while camping with your horse at an endurance ride. The saying that an army travels on its stomach is never truer than when applied to an endurance horse, so make sure that yours has plenty of food and water within easy reach at all times. Keep in mind that as your horse gets closer to the bottom of his bucket or hay bag, what seemed easy to reach at first for a tied horse may later be out of reach. If you temporarily tie your horse short for grooming or tacking up, remember not to walk away and leave him tied too short to reach his food and water. If tied, the rope shouldn't be so long that your horse can get a leg over it and get tangled up. A good rule of thumb is for the rope to be just barely long enough that the horse's nose can just reach the ground. If your horse does get a leg over his tie rope, a thick cotton rope is less likely to cause serious rope burns than do nylon ropes. Never use wire cable or chain as a tie line, as these can cause severe injury to your horse. Make sure that your halter fits securely. Endurance horses are always itchy after a ride, and many have gotten loose after rubbing their heads against something and pulling a loose-fitting halter over their ears. Halters or collars don't need to be skin-tight, just well-fitting. Use heavy-duty hardware. Stainless steel is generally stronger than brass. Your tie system should include either a quick-release knot or a quick-release snap. Keep in mind that if your horse sets back and is fighting against a tie rope, you might not be able to safely reach the snap next to the halter without getting injured yourself. Horses can also release the quick-release snap themselves by rubbing an itchy head against things, so it's better to place that type of snap further down the line. Place it close to the tie ring on your trailer or overhead tie, or place a fuse in the rope that can be easily reached in an emergency. Keep a sharp pocket knife nearby and readily available to cut the rope if needed in an emergency. Plan your camp so that your restraint system is not in major lanes of traffic, where your horse is left more exposed and vulnerable to accidents or other loose horses. Whenever possible, a good trick is to park several rigs at right angles to each other, with the horses in between to help keep them separated from the rest of base camp. If you're using an electric tape pen, remember that putting a blanket on your horse renders the shock effect useless. Even if your horses live together in the same pen or pasture at home, don't put multiple horses together into the same pen at rides. If something unexpected happens to allow escape, it's better to have just one horse loose than several. A single loose horse is more likely to stay in camp near other horses. A herd of loose horses might decide to leave the country. Don't park or place your pens or tied horses too close to your neighbor's camp. Crowding a neighbor's space is both dangerous and considered very poor camp etiquette. Imagine how you would feel if your horse or rig were kicked by someone else's horse that was tied too close to you. Keep strange horses far enough away from each other so that they cannot touch noses, and more importantly cannot squabble, kick, or otherwise invade each other's territory. A good rule of thumb is to allow at least 8 to 10 feet between the closest points neighboring horses can reach with a back foot. More is better if you have the room available, but try to be as efficient as possible in camps where space is tight and close quarters are unavoidable. Be careful to keep equipment and clutter far away from your horse. This will prevent both damage to your gear and also injury to your horse. Any buckets or tubs being used for food or water should either be well secured, soft enough that they cannot cause injury if stepped on, or heavy enough not to be easily knocked over. If using a hay bag, make sure it's tied high enough so that your horse cannot paw and get a foot caught. The most important factor in camping safely with your horse is to practice at home before you come to your first endurance ride. Your horse will gain experience over time, but should already be familiar with the routine so that he can eat, drink, and rest both before and after the ride. This will help ensure the safety of all concerned and help make your first ride a more relaxing and enjoyable event.